Welcome to this tutorial on AWS Config. AWS Config is a service that helps you track changes to your AWS resources. It continuously monitors and records resource configurations. You can also use it to evaluate whether those configurations comply with best practices. Here's how it works. Once enabled, AWS Config captures snapshots of your resources. Every time a resource changes, Config records that change. These changes are stored in an S3 bucket and can be analyzed later. You can also define rules in AWS Config. Rules let you check if resources follow specific security or operational guidelines. For example, you can check if security groups allow public SSH access or if S3 buckets have public RED permissions enabled. If a resource becomes non-compliant, AWS Config will flag it. You can even set up automatic remediation to fix it. Now let's talk use cases. First, security compliance. You can monitor if your infrastructure follows policies like PCI DSS or HIPAA. Second, resource audit and troubleshooting. AWS Config provides a full timeline of changes, which helps you understand what happened and when. Third, operational visibility. You can see which configurations were changed, by whom, and how it affects your environment. Finally, multi-account governance. With AWS Config aggregators, you can monitor configurations across multiple accounts in one place. In short, AWS Config helps you stay secure, compliant, and in control of your AWS environment. Now that you know the basics, let's move on to a hands-on walkthrough. Let's get started by opening the AWS Config service from the AWS Management Console. On the home screen, click Get Started to begin setting it up. We'll now configure AWS Config to record resource configurations. We'll choose all resource types with customizable overrides, so AWS Config records changes for all supported resource types in the region. This gives us full visibility and lets us fine-tune specific types later. You also have the option to select specific resource types. In that case, AWS Config will only record the ones you choose. Keep in mind, AWS Config is not part of the free tier. So if you want to avoid charges, just follow along for now. You can select a specific resource type or skip recording altogether. Once the tutorial is complete, go to settings and stop recording to avoid any costs. Next, under default settings, we define how frequently changes should be recorded. We'll leave it as continuous recording, which captures configuration changes as soon as they happen. Now, let's look at override settings. This allows you to change the recording frequency or exclude certain resource types. Here, IAM resource types are listed by default, but we won't override anything for now. Scrolling down to data governance, we must assign a role to AWS config. We'll use the default option, use an existing AWS config service linked role. This role comes with the necessary permissions pre-attached. Then we set up the delivery channel. This is where AWS config sends recorded configuration data. We'll have the default option to create a bucket. The bucket name is already pre-filled here. You can change it if you'd like, but for this demo, we'll go ahead and leave it as is. The S3 path shows where the logs will be stored. You can optionally specify a prefix to organize the files. Lastly, we can enable an SNS topic if we want to receive notifications when configuration changes happen. This is optional and useful for alerting or automation. Once everything looks good, click Next to proceed. And you'll see an option to enable AWS Managed Rules. These are pre-built compliance checks provided by AWS. We'll skip defining rules now and add them later, so click Next again. Review your configuration, we're recording all resources, excluding global ones, and delivering data to our S3 bucket. And we have not set up any AWS config rules. Click Confirm to finish setup. AWS config will now start evaluating your account. Once AWS config finishes its initial scan, you can explore discovered resources. This may take a few minutes, so we'll pause here. AWS config is successfully set up, now you see the AWS config dashboard. At the top, we see the compliance status section. It shows how many rules and resources are compliant or non-compliant. Right now, everything is at zero, which is expected if no rules have been added yet. Below that is the non-compliant rules by resource count section. Since no rules are currently failing, this area is empty. In the resource inventory, AWS is still discovering your resources. Once that process completes, you'll see a list of detected resource types and counts. Over on the right, the graphs and metrics provide insights into configuration activity and delivery status, such as recorded items and notification or export failures. 
At the moment, there's no data yet, which is typical for a new setup. This dashboard gives you a centralized view of your compliance, tracked resources, and the operational health of AWS config. On the left-hand menu, click Resources. Here, you'll see a list of resources config has found, like VPCs, subnets, and security groups. First, let's look at the AWS config settings before exploring resources further. We're now on the AWS config settings page. At the top, you can see the data and delivery section. It shows the data retention period, which by default is set to seven years, and the configured S3 bucket used to store configuration history and snapshots. Below that, under the Customer Managed Recorder tab, we see that recording is currently turned on. You can stop the recording anytime using the Stop Recording button if you want to avoid ongoing charges. Moving down, we have the Recording Method section. The current strategy is set to record all resource types, with the option to apply custom overrides. The default recording frequency is continuous, meaning AWS config records changes as they happen. You can also expand the lists to view specific resource types with override settings and resource types with default settings. At the bottom, you can see the IAM role AWS is using for this config setup, AWS service role for config. Finally, there's an Amazon CloudWatch events rule section that lets AWS config forward configuration change details to CloudWatch for event-based actions. Let's go back to explore resources inventory recorded by AWS config. This page displays all the resources recorded by AWS Config in your account. You can filter resources by category, type, or compliance status. Use the search bar to look up a specific resource by its identifier. You can also choose to include deleted resources. Each row in the table shows the resource name, type, and compliance status. Let's filter to look at a specific resource type, let's check EC2 security groups. To dive deeper, select a resource and click on View Details. You can find configuration detail about this item. Or resource timeline to track configuration changes over time. This view helps you monitor and manage configuration compliance across your AWS environment. At this point, these resources have no compliance status because we haven't added any rules yet. Let me filter EC2 security group. Let's add a compliance rule. Click on Rules in the left-hand menu. Now, click Add Rule. AWS lets you choose Managed Rules, or Custom Rules using Lambda Functions, or Create Custom Rule using Guard, which is to use Guard Custom Policy that you write to evaluate whether your AWS resources comply with the rule. Let's keep it simple and pick a Managed Rule. From the list, search for a rule called Restricted SSH. This rule checks that no security group allows Open SSH, Port 22, access from the Internet. Click Next. This rule will trigger when a security group changes. It applies only to EC2 security groups and doesn't need parameters. Click Next. Review and save the rule. After a short while, AWS Config will evaluate the rule. Refresh the page, and you'll see the results. Here we see that two security groups are compliant and two of them are non-compliant. Let's click on a non-compliant one. Click on Manage Resources. We can see this inbound rule allows SSH connection from anywhere. This is why it's non-compliant. Let's fix that. Delete this inbound rule and click Save. AWS Config will now re-evaluate the resource. After a short pause, refresh the rule, now it should be compliant. Let's click on Resource Timeline. In this AWS Config Resource Timeline, we can observe how configuration changes and compliance status are tracked in real time. First, a non-compliant rule is detected, indicating a violation, most likely due to an overly permissive security group rule. Soon after, a cloud trail event shows that the root user triggered a change using the revoke security group ingress action. This typically means an inbound rule, such as SSH access from the internet, was removed. AWS Config then captures this as a configuration change, clearly showing a JSON difference where a rule allowing SSH from anywhere was deleted. Following the change, a compliance check is triggered. The restricted SSH rule is re-evaluated and now shows as compliant, confirming that the resource is once again secure and aligned with policy. This timeline highlights how AWS Config works alongside CloudTrail to provide visibility, track changes, and ensure continuous compliance. Next, let's explore remediation. From the Rules section, under a rule, 
click Manage Remediation. You can choose Manual or Automatic Remediation. Automatic Remediation, which triggers the action as soon as a resource becomes non-compliant. Or Manual Remediation, where you'll need to trigger the action yourself. If you select Automatic Remediation, you can also define Maximum Retry Attempts, the number of times AWS should retry the action. Retry Time Window, the total time AWS has to keep trying before it stops. Next, under Remediation Action Details, select an automation document from AWS Systems Manager that will carry out the remediation. Then, we have Rate Limits. Concurrent Execution Rate, how many remediation actions can run at the same time. Error Rate, how many failures are allowed before stopping the remediation. Under Resource ID Parameter, you can optionally pass the ID of the non-compliant resource to the remediation action. In the Parameters section, you can add custom input values needed by the remediation action, such as specific configuration settings or resource names. Once all fields are configured, click Save Changes to apply the settings. For Manual, this means the remediation action won't run automatically, you'll need to manually trigger it to fix any non-compliant resources. Next, in Remediation Action Details, you'll choose a predefined remediation action. These actions run using AWS Systems Manager Automation. Then comes the Rate Limit section. Here, you can set the concurrent execution rate, which controls how many remediation tasks can run in parallel. The error rate, which is how many failures are allowed before the entire remediation process stops. Under Resource ID Parameter, you can choose to pass the resource ID of the non-compliant item to your remediation action. This depends on the specific action selected. Finally, in the Parameters section, you can supply additional input values like resource IDs or specific configuration details your remediation action may need. These can be in string or string list format. Once everything is configured, click Save Changes to apply your settings, or cancel if you want to discard them. Finally, under Aggregators, you can aggregate data across multiple AWS accounts. An aggregator lets you collect and view configuration and compliance data from multiple AWS accounts and regions in one place. At the top, enable Allow Data Replication by checking the box. This gives AWS Config permission to pull data from source accounts into your aggregator account. Next, enter a unique aggregator name. You can use up to 64 alphanumeric characters, including hyphens and underscores. Now, under Select Source Accounts, choose how you want to include accounts. You can add individual account IDs manually or upload a file with a comma-separated list. Alternatively, if you're part of an AWS organization, choose Add My Organization to include all accounts automatically. Note, you must be signed in as the management account or delegated administrator, and AWS organization's integration must be properly set up. Once you've entered or uploaded the account IDs, scroll down to the Regions section. Here, select the AWS regions you want this aggregator to collect data from. You must choose at least one region. If you want AWS Config to include future regions automatically, check the Include Future AWS Regions option. When everything is set, click Create Aggregator to complete the setup. That's it. You've now learned how to set up AWS Config, record resource configurations, add compliance rules, and enable remediation. You can also explore other rules such as S3 Bucket Public Read Prohibited. It checks whether your Amazon S3 buckets do not allow public read access. Root Account MFA Enabled. It ensures that the root user account has multi-factor authentication, MFA Enabled. And EC2 Instance Detailed Monitoring Enabled. It checks whether Amazon EC2 instances have detailed monitoring enabled. AWS Config gives you deep visibility, helps enforce security policies, and simplifies audits. It's a powerful tool to keep your cloud environment secure, compliant, and well-documented.